Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and welcome back to my continuing series of 10,000 and below, where I go to Board Game Geek, the world's largest internet database for board games, and I look at games that are ranked 10,000 or less, or in today's case, games that are ranked 11,301 and less. And we look at them. Sometimes they're fantastic games that you should know about. Sometimes they deserve to be where they're at. Sometimes they're games I've never heard of. And I'm like, well, let's take a look at them. So here we go. Let's get started. I always take a look at the first and last one for no other reason. So this one here is Barnyard Buddies. This sounds like a kid's game. It's from Reinhard Stopp, who makes a lot of kids games over the time. And in fact, I see there's Big Top is the name of this. Uh, Circus Escape. Alrighty, I've not ever played this game. It came out, because I play a lot of kids games. And, uh, well, it looks like it's collecting animals. Uh, what are you doing here? You're collecting animals. You reveal a card that depicts four animals, each in different colors. You race to find out which animal and color not depicted in a re Okay. Simple. All right, I like that concept. Came out in 1996. <laughs> All right, the next one here, um, which I have a hard time pronouncing, Gamsh Alpin. This is from Zoc. This is essentially a spoons variant. Uh, and in this game, you are trying to collect the four of a kind, but also you're giving hints to your partner through a code. And if your if the other team figures out your code, they can get points too. Has nice artwork, but at the end of the day, it is a spoons variant. Battleship Hidden Threat. Well, that looks pretty neat. Uh, Cartamunde Hasbro. I is this just battle? Battleship the card game, essentially. Wow. The weight here is really low. 1.14 out of 5. Um, all right. So it's essentially Battleship the card game. I wonder why this... All right. Looks a little washed out, the pictures, but there you go. All righty. Let's jump down now here to Telltale. Telltale is a storytelling game from uh, Blue Orange Games, an improv style game for kids. There's a lot of these storytelling games. If you have kids and you want to do one, it looks like there is actually several versions of Telltale. I didn't realize there was a Toy Story version, but it's worked really well with my kids when I played it. When did I review it? 2011. Well, my now teenagers played this one back when they were kids. Lightning Poland, Takara Island. 136 people have rated this one. Came out 2011. Interesting. I've not heard of this one. It's the Edict of King Buduauna. You're looking through six piles tiles looking for a hot spring. And so you're going through these here. Oh, I see. Takara Island is the same gameplay as the Edict, just as a different artwork and such. Hmm. Huh. Well, it looks like kind of an interesting game. I don't... Well, that's... If someone really likes the game, they built those special people for it. Huh. I have not heard of this one before. Well, I'll have to look at it sometime, maybe. Alrighty here. Moving on down. Pacific War Hex and Hop. This came out in 2015. This is a game that has these tiles. Looks like they are all a bunch of, you're gonna have these hexagonal tiles. Two sides need to match. And you're basically trying to get rid of, tiles in your hand are negative points. Okay. Looks like as you put them down, though, that kind of looks cool. You're just trying to match stuff and give your cards to other people. The concept sounds fascinatingly simple. Alrighty, now we jump down to the Scrambled States of America Deluxe Edition. This came out in 2002. I reviewed it in 2012. That sounds like the 10th anniversary from Game Right. Um, find a state that ends with the letter A. Now find one that borders Tennessee. A Scramble Challenge. Man, I know I played this with my kids because I definitely gave it a kids game rating. Oh, I do remember the different funny pictures, though, for the states. The kids did enjoy that one. Alrighty, well, it worked with kids. And that's what I'll remember about it. 
Dirty Fridge. All right, I got to take a moment here and look at a game called Dirty Fridge. Came out in 2019. It's a memory game. Ah, sounded fun until that point. Well, why is there a fly that big in your fridge? Ah, that's a nasty fridge. Well, I guess it is the name of the game. The Great Chili Cook-Off. Now, this came out in 2006. My review of it... Oh, did I never review this game? Huh. Well, there you go. I've definitely played this game in the past. You're, it's a trick-taking game, and you're trying to get the ingredients. Um, so, if there's a tie between cards and the person who's second last goes, and you're just trying to get different ingredients for chili and stuff. I like this. I, I like this one. It's been a long time since I played this. It's from r, &R Games, but uh, certainly one to, if you're looking for an old trick-taking game, the Great Chili Cook-Off is not a bad one. Super Cluedo, Cluedo Challenge. Super Cluedo Challenge. This is a more complicated version of Clue. Nine suspects and nine weapons, plus the house gardens, in which there's four garden ornaments. Cards are now numbered and color-coded. Huh. There's no suggestions, only accusations. Well, I have to say that it might be more tricky and more complicated, but it looks bleh as all get out. Oh, well. All right, let's jump down. Star System has 97 ratings, which is, oh, <laughs> that was not what I was expecting. I thought it was about stars. It is about stars, but it's about movie stars, I guess. It's a deduction game for two players from Walter Obert, who's made quite a few games that we've been talking about, actually, for a while here. Uh, the publisher is Scribabs. Is there a picture of the game? Oh, back and forth two-player deduction game. Hmm, the artwork and the cards look kind of cool. Hmm, I've not heard of that one before. Marvin Marvel's Marvelous Marble Machine, or MMMMM, I believe is what we called it for short. I do remember this one. This was from Paradise Games, not anything to do with Chaz Morrow here, actually. Um, and in this one, there are these marbles that are going to be rolling around based on the different things that you put on this board and you put on things so that it, the marbles go to where you want them to go. It's a neat concept. Obviously, it's almost print and play. It's wooden pieces with stickers on them and then a handkerchief type, type map. I like the concept of it a lot. It's been a long time since I played it. Hen House Havoc. I remember this one. This one is essentially Battleship with Special Powers, which I enjoyed, and also four players. So you can see here each person has their own little board, and you put pieces on it, and then you have these other boards, and you're kind of shooting at these boards, trying to hit different characters, but also your pieces shoot, so I might have something where I can hit three different spots. But if you take that particular thing out, I can no longer use it anymore. It's silly fun, but it works really well, and I'd rather play this than Battleship. Alrighty, uh, moving down here, we got the Siege of Constantinople, 1978 game with 177 ratings. This is definitely an, a ye old war game where they don't even have pictures on the cards. I do love this though. This was clearly typed on a typewriter. <laughs> huh. Well. These were games that people did enjoy, and still some of them do enjoy to this day. There's a lot of hexes there, though. That's actually a really interesting battle. But, um, hmm. Venus Needs Men. 2016, but it came out in 2006. Yeah, that's when I first, uh, first went through it. This is a five different alien water, uh, worlds. You're trying to capture and destroy Earth's population. So the Venus people were coming down to grab men. Um, some were just coming to, to kill people. Some, I think one was coming to eat people. This is a game that when I played it, I was like very amused by it. Now I think I would be less enthralled at this point in time. It's been almost 15 years since I first played this game. But it was a funny theme, a funny, interesting idea. And you each aliens trying to go down and get people from Earth. Um, it definitely has a look of an older game. It would be, need to be streamlined, I think, for it to work well now. Riffith, Riffithy? I don't even, how do you spell that? R-I-F-F-I-F-I. Riffithy. From Stefan Dora. All right. There's uh, five different color sets of cards, one through eight, and matching discs. Deal them out. 
It's not a trick-taking game. You can play any card you want. Well, that's interesting. It's Steph Stefan Dora, and I really tend to like his stuff. So we'll take a look at some of the things that he has done. The Bucket King, um, Dicey and Seagal, which is one of the best trick-taking games ever made. Buccaneer, Tonga Island. Um, but for sale is obviously the one he's best known for. So this seems like one of his games that did not do as hot as his other ones, but sounds like one that I would enjoy trying out. Uh, as we move down here, we're looking, there's more dice games. This one's Captain Dice. Vinegar Joe's War, Killing Code, Venice Vendetta, European Union, the board game. I'm going to look at that one, and then we'll look at Cat Town. European Union, the board game. This came out in 2015. Three to seven players. You're just It's an influence point. You're trying to get different people. So, you're, so it's a political game. I do like political games. Does it come with that gavel? Hmm. Very cartoony artwork. So who made this game? Big fun games. All right. Then we have Cat Town. So Cat Town is one that I played. It's a paradise here. Memory, hand management, deck manipulation. A bunch of things that are combined together. I thought it was okay. I do like how the cards look. You know, uh, really, really pretty cats on here. So the art is probably the best thing. Even the pieces look fantastic. It's a good-looking game, but it was just an okay card game. Dungeon Plungeon, Laguna. Laguna has 143 ratings. This is from Queen Games by Bernhard Weber. Bernhard Weber, uh, Chateau Roquefort, which won the Kinderspiel des Jahres, and Aqueduct. So I played a couple of his games that have made it higher in the rankings. This one lowered down, but it looks interesting. You're moving rafts around fishing. And you're collecting pearls. I do like how those pearls look. Looks like an abstract game. Those are your rafts. Huh. Well, this seems like an interesting one if you came across it at a convention to give a world to. So that's Laguna. Color Wheel. I got to look at Color Wheel here. Oh, this is the Looney Labs game. I, I'll just rank this one an eight. This is part of their big pyramid game. But this is essentially, Color Wheel is just a, uh, you have all these pieces, and you put them out, and then you use moves, switching ones that are next to each other, ones that are the same size, and you're moving around, and you have a certain number of moves to get them all to where they are all touching ones of the same color. It's essentially a solitaire puzzle, but it's a very fun one, I think. All righty, moving down here. Into the Black Forest, maybe Road Rally USA. Road Rally USA is from Mayfair Games. Oh, yes, yes, I gave this one a six. I probably would even drop it now. Man, Mayfair Games, at this point in time when they were publishing games, these are just not good quality games, unfortunately. This was a racing game. It wasn't a bad little racing game as you went by. Uh, it was more of a Road Rally game, hence the, the name. Um... Yeah, this the component quality dropped it a bunch for me, and it wasn't that fun. Pyramidus. And then we'll look at this. Imwald da Sind I don't know how to pronounce that. All right, so this Pyramidus game, 1988. Rowan Seegers. I wonder what else he's designed. Cafe International, the card game. All right, and Kabale. And Mississippi. So not a lot of games that I might recognize. But this one here, an abstract strategy board game. You have stacks of pyramids. And you got to block everyone else, their pyramids, and then or get five-year pyramids to the home site. So this is an older style game. Definitely has that look to it. Yeah, looks okay. I like the pyramids. And then this one here from Mark Seinholtz. Uh, you're a bunch of robbers, and you're knocking over farms, getting loot, seize ends. Okay. The board looks okay. It looks interesting. Probably never came out in English, though. Alrighty. Doxy Dash. Rhett Summer. Here's Rome at War II Fading Legions. That almost got 100 ratings. 
Wow, it's the second game at the Roman War Series. Came out in 2002. Designer Steven Jackson. That's not Steve Jackson, by the way. It's a very different person. That's weird. They made the squares wavy. Is that just so you know it's water? That is one bad board, though. I don't, I don't think it's water. I think it's grass. So why are the lines all wavy like that? Definitely a heavier Euro-style game. War game, not Euro. Oh my, Super Farmer. Now this one's really low down here considering that it came out in 1943 but has 1,186 rankings. So this is an old, old game, Super Farmer. Um, yeah, okay. You're the role of someone in a farm. Breed, exchange, and gather different animals. It was designed in World War II. Interesting. Oh, I've seen this version, Super Farmer. I've definitely seen this game. Uh, it was from uh, from Grana Games. They republished it. Oh, okay, I didn't realize the game was that old of a game. And that's a lot of ratings. There's a lot of nostalgia there, and the fact of where its origins came from, I would be very hesitant to like really shoot down the game, but I probably wouldn't want to play it either. Huh. Oh, here's Ankh, Gods of Egypt. Well, this is probably higher at this point in time. Uh, by, I'm recording this actually before the Kickstarter launches, and I think this is airing after the Kickstarter ends, <laughs> something like that. Uh, but this is the third in Eric Lang's trilogy, and it looks really cool. Uh, he, he did the Blood Rage, and then Rising Sun, and now Ankh. Very much looking forward to this one myself. I don't know anything else about it other than Roy played it and said it was a lot of fun. That's not lemonade, a game in which uh, you are trying not to drink lemonade. And you're running a lemonade thing. So I, I, it's supposed to be a fairly simple game. And the theme of it being, that's not lemonade, is more in the background than anything else. It's not like it's necessarily a gross game to play. That's what I've heard. Library. This has it, the word lie in it. Daryl Hannah and Hillary Shepard. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, Daryl Hannah and Hillary Shepard. Discovery Bay game, simply fun. Oh, it's similar to Balderdash. Yeah, wasn't she like advertising this on late night talk shows as if it was a new game they had designed when in reality it's just Balderdash all over again? Huh. Well, I mean, it's still kind of interesting. I think it's... They read the title, author, and synopsis of a real-life book, and everyone else writes the first line of the book. Okay, that's actually not like Balderdash. That's different. I take back what I said. I would actually play this, because I like Balderdash. wonder why this one's ranked so low, then. Hmm. Let's see. Trick Shot. That's a game that's coming. that has come out or is coming out very soon. It was on Kickstarter from Wolf Designer about hockey. I know Sam was a big fan of this one here. Um, when he played it, I have not played it yet, although I was just looking at it on the shelf, and we'll probably get to it soon. No Swap, No Pay. So this is an interesting game. I played this last year, actually. It's a little simple back-and-forth game where you have bags and there's coins, and you are um, sometimes just swapping a bag with somebody else, and sometimes you want someone to take your bag from you. There's a bunch of bluff and double bluff in it. Very light, though, from Mondu Games. And then we have Scrappers here. Scrappers is based on uh, these little guys here from Privateer Press uh, from the game Infernal uh, Contraption. Here you're building, you're running around a factory trying to get parts off to build a contraption. It's just too random and too lucky for me to really uh, push it more than that. So here's Frankenstein. I wanted to quick take a look at this one because this Frankenstein game, it's a monster building game. I was kind of interested in this one. It was, even if that is definitely Universal Studios Frankenstein, but, uh, oh, this is a, Yehuda Berlinger designed this one. So this may be a reprint of uh, one of his other games that he did. Hmm. All right. Jumbo Grand Prix, Buzz It, Cineplexity, and Sakara. Four games in a row we're going to look at here. Jumbo Grand Prix. Uh, you're going to make racing points. You start with four cards. You build a car. 
that you have a certain number of points combination. Huh. It's from Jumbo. Not played that one. All right. Buzz it. This one here is from Asmodee from Reiner Knizia. You get three cards with two questions. Ask one of the two questions. You must give an answer in the time limit. You keep going. Well, what are the questions? Oh, oh, I see, I see. You're asking them a question for them to get the answer to it. I'm not sure this one ever came out in English. Cineplexity, though. Uh, this is from Out of the Box Publishing. And you. this is actually very similar to many other games in this genre. You flip over two different categories, and then you try to have a, um, a game that matches both, I mean, a movie that matches both of the categories. This is from the, unfortunately... Out of, uh, out of uh, print, I mean, defunct company, uh, out of the box publishing is re-implemented by Double Feature, which we talked about earlier because that ranking is 11,025. So we just talked about them. Sakara here, 2007, from Manfred Grabmeyer. And this is the only game that they have designed. Two-player game. Ah, this is one of the two-player Cosmos games. You're building a pyramid. I've never played this one. Those Cosmos two-player games, some of them were fantastic, some not quite so much. I wouldn't know. This one is kind of low. Profiteers. We got a couple games that I have played here. One in 2016 and one in 2010. Uh, this is a Hava kids game. Oh, I remember this one. This was kind of a neat game where you were like your you were your eyes were closed as you moved around and tried to maneuver through this island and not bump into stuff. Everyone else was helping you out. That's cool. And sounds like a plan. You're giving outrageous advice. So it's kind of like apples to apples. <coughs> Meh. It was okay. Sneaky cards. I like sneaky cards, and I think there's even a sneaky cards too. Sneaky cards or. Um, is a, a game in which you have a card and then you give it to somebody else, like take a selfie with a total stranger, and then you give them that card. But you can scan these cards and see where they've gone all over the world. I thought that was a neat, a neat concept. I don't know how often it's worked. Top hats and treachery, I say. Tuberinth. Oh, I do want to see what Tuberinth is. That's kind of a cool name. A set of tubes, and you have to show those. Ah, okay, so it's, it's, that, it's this game where you need to connect one thing to another, except that it's a puzzle-style game, but it's, it's also multiple people playing. Meh. Battletech Aerotech. This is the air stuff from Battletech. Woo! That, that is old, old, old looking. Wow, that board is horrible. <laughs> Uh, oh, well, I'm glad they make nice-looking boards these days. That was 1986. Sheep, Dogs, and Wolves. This was a, uh, a duel or a bid. How many sheep do you think you can save? That's right, you're placing them down, and the wolves eat sheep, dogs scare away wolves, and you're both placing tiles down. It was an interesting game, but it felt a little samey, I think, after time, as time went by. All righty. Well, we're almost done with this one. Here we got Mafia Vendetta. Mafia Vendetta from Fantasy Flight Games Hobby World is the one who originally did it. Bluffing from 7 to 17 players. So it's another ma it's a mafia. It's a mafia variant. The psycho can kill someone else. Hmm. All right. Then we got Mint Condition. And the last one on the list, Crappy Birthday. So let's take a look at Mint Condition first. This is a game about keeping your games in mint condition. This just came out of Essen last year. And so it is a drafting game. I like it. I think it could have been a tighter game. It's a little too easy to get rid of bad cards, and then it becomes a little lucky. Sometimes you just get a bad card, and there's nothing you can do about it. I liked it. I thought it could have been better. Crappy Birthday is really good. I'm really surprised this one is down so low on this list. In Crappy Birthday, you have a bunch of gifts that are bad. And people are trying to pick the one that you think is the least bad of those, or maybe the most bad. I thought it was a lot of fun. I really liked the, the really bad gifts that it had in here. 
like fuzzy dice. I don't think that's that bad of a, of a gift, but there are some like mime class or a decorative urinal or a pet tarantula. I do not want pet tarantula. Personal paparazzi. Well, there you go. Uh, anyway, that's crappy birthday. It's a lot of fun. So that's it. Another 100 games, folks. Thanks so much for joining me. If there's a games that you think I should have talked about more or you have comments, let me know in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Tom Vast, and you've been watching 10,000 and below on the Dice Tower.